Hello and welcome to another episode of But Have You Heard About Conspiracy Theory Edition. Dun, dun, dun. As always, I am joined by my lovely partner in crime, Matt. Yo. You don't know what the topic is about today. Nope, never do. Never do. But we're going to focus a little on science. So we have flat earthers. Oh boy. But we're not doing flat earthers. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> we are doing hollow earthers. Mole people? Not mole. Mm, maybe. Okay, well. Let's get into the nitty gritties. <laughs> so the theory is that the earth is hollow right. or contains a substantial interior space. Like a balloon. Yes and no. So there's multiple theories about the whole okay. yeah. earth being hollow. So the most notable and also I would say the most scientifically backed theory is by Edmund Haley. How is it scientifically backed? <laughs> I'm going to get there. Okay. So Edmund Haley, who was famous for Haley's Comet. Right. So obviously scientists. So he noticed that the Earth's magnetic field is rather unpredictable with its lines shifting from year to year with the poles. Right. I mean, everyone kind of knows that. But what did you put in the 1600s? How do you explain it? That's true. Yeah. That's a good point. So he blamed the Earth's hollowness as why that it shifts. It was erratic. Yeah. And said there had to be three more concentric shells within and the poles of the inner shells that throw off the magnetic field for ours. And he also believed that life flourished below so he believed that there was a subterranean mole yes. people i knew it so but he didn't call them mole people because basically back in the 1600s signs didn't really understand like didn't have a an interlocking with religion hmm. scientists at the time legitimately thought that every planet in our solar system was inhabited right so they thought that there was life so they assumed god is storing life everywhere hmm. if we think the earth is hollow there must be life of some sort down there whether it be mole people real people or motherfucking dinosaurs land of the lost basically so Haley actually had data and he based it a lot off of the other scientific counterpart of the time which was isaac newton who had mm. published principia which is basically like the start of modern day scientific theories and methods and i'm not a science person i own this shit that i don't understand science and so when i say these things it's because i wrote them down word for word <laughs> Because I don't understand. So maybe we shouldn't have done science. Anyways, Haley's data. Variations in Earth's magnetic field couldn't be due to a magnetic body wandering around in rock because rocks are basically solid. So there must be unseen circle spinning. And that would be basically from hollow Earth, is that there are circles spinning underneath that would then throw off that magnetic field. And so when you have your compass, that is why North is not always North. So... Earth is outward. There are three inside areas that are held together like Saturn's rings, yeah. and it uses gravity. Wait, is this a theory or is this like... This real? is his theory. Okay, this is, I was going to say, like, I'm pretty sure this is not real. <laughs> no, 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 this is his whole theory. Like, there so are... it was just like a, a bunch of like discs spinning around inside the Earth, basically. Three, yeah. specifically. And they were the size of other planets. So you would have like a Venus-sized one. You would have a Mercury-sized one. And I believe a Mars-sized one. So it's like a jawbreaker. Yes. <laughs> So, in all honesty, he wasn't that far off on his ideas because there They're, were layers. Correct. But I they mean, weren't there other are, Earths. And they are pretty independent of each other as far as, like, composition and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their in, in te their structural integrity. Because how, how many layers are there? I, I want to say there's, like, four. Yeah, so thanks to Google, there's the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, upper mantle, and the crust. Okay, so I was incorrect on the amount. But, but you were close enough. I was close on. I was correct on the amount of inner layers. I thought there was a fifth layer that was like a, in tandem with the crust. But if you look at like the dimensions of those things, the crust is like a thumbnail worth of distance, and like the mantles are fucking huge. They're yes. gargantuan, depth wise. And if you think about how deep we've ever gone, like in the ocean, is laughable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, back in the 1600s, late 1600s. No, you don't know shit. You don't know anything. And also, he assumed that the Earth's shell must be lined with magnetic matter. Mm -hmm. And that's why the poles also, everything just basically stays where it is. So that's some data theory. The fact that he was able to determine <laughs> that there was magnetic disturbances from, like, the norm or whatever is impressive in itself. But, like, the, the conclusion makes sense. It's not really, like, outlandish to think that when you have literally nothing to support anything is the equivalent of saying earth's not flat because you know we've we figured out that it's not and here's why but you can't exactly go to the center of the earth 
and prove it. <laughs> exactly. So Haley, while he is a scientist, there was also a lot of folklore from back in ancient times with the Greeks, Egyptians, mm -hmm. Romans. Honestly, there was folklore and then people trying to practice it well into the 1990s. Oh boy. Yeah. So one of Haley's, I would say, contemporaries at the time as a folklore base was a German by the name of Kischer. He published Mundus Subterius in 1664. And he basically said the earth had central fire and vast underground lakes and lava chambers. Right. And on the North Pole was a gaping vortex that sucks huh. water down to the central fire where the water is heated and exits the South Pole. What? <laughs> yeah. And that, when was this? 1664. So part of folklore. Germans. Okay. So this is really old. So yeah. it's, it's another excusable thing due to the times where it's like, you just make up bullshit basically. Yeah. Do you want to fast forward 200 years to um, people in America being dumb? In the 1800s? 1869 to be. Okay. Precise. So instead of just saying that humans live on the outside surface of a hollow planet, right. sometimes called a convex there have been multiple claims by some people that we actually live on the inside surface of a hollow sphere, basically meaning that we live on a concave hollow earth. So like the sky is the inside of another shell? Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. So serious theater doctor from upstate New York, shout out upstate New York, proposed such a concave hollow earth in 1869, calling the scheme a cellular cosmogony. T founded a group called the Corsian Unity. What the fuck are these people and their goofy ass names? Yeah, seriously. It's totally a cult name. If I he, ever heard one. He did. He created a cult. And you want to know? Guess what state they went to? Florida? Yay! There you go. Oh, so it was Florida. Florida man, of course. So their group, Corsian Unity Group, and they called it Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> the main colony survives as a preserved Florida state historic site as well. But obviously all of those followers have died. And I do not believe anybody would have kept on the mantle. However, they claim to have experimentally verified the concavity of the Earth's curvature. At least they admit that the Earth is round and like flat Earthers. Right. Basically, they tried to verify it in like the early 1900s. And then there's several 20th century German writers that actually published work advocating the hollow earth hypothesis. Um, and also, it has been reported, although without really any historical documentation, that Hitler was influenced by concave hollow earth ideas and sent an expedition in an unsuccessful attempt to spy on the British fleet by pointing infrared cameras up at the sky. What? He also went to Antarctica, so maybe he got the, the Oh, poles. yeah, I remember that being a thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, okay, so that's basically it on the hollow earth and convex and concave hollow earth theories. That's ridiculous. So the fact that there are, were cults up until even, like, the late 1800s that then said that they were able to perform scientific experiments when seismology, I believe, came out in the early 1900s with earthquakes able to prove that it's you know tectonic plates right so for hollow earth stuff it's in literature whether it's people just using it for jumping off points but you have a lot of literature that goes off of you know there's a land below where we are and that's where the dinosaurs really are during the center of the earth exactly so we've never been to the center of the earth and probably we can't never will. and we probably never will because oh my god we're gonna die going there so these are all theories definitely i'm not putting my tinfoil hat on for them because i I kind of want to go with science. I get the people from, you know, like the 16th century where your science is kind of limited. But we had some pretty smart guys back then, too. The, the fact that people are able to deny the fact that the Earth is round is ridiculous. But when you can't, you know, go outside of the atmosphere or whatever you would call the world in a crust-based world or a you're oh, the hollow earth? Hollow earth. You know, you're inside a hollow earth and we, the, the sky is just the inside of another planet, even though it's still the same thing. Uh, it's far-fetched at best, but... It's a fun thing to think about. It's just, how do you, how would you explain, if you assumed you believe this, how would you explain things like night and day? Like there's just like a big spotlight in the sky that is only on one part of the inside of the earth. So Haley said that there was another sun. Like on the inside, there were smaller suns. 
Oh, Lord. Because they also didn't realize... I guess realize... you didn't understand what the sun was either at that point, neither. So, it's, again, you don't... You're trying to explain things you just don't understand, basically. Yeah. But that's only assuming that there were other life forms that needed uh, the sun to propel them. Because you could have had other life forms that didn't need sunlight. Mm. So, you know. Mm, it's just... It's silly thinking about it now, but because of when this theory was conjured being such a long time ago i wouldn't even say that Haley conjured it because it was definitely i know i'm just saying that the he came up with scientific facts that were given to him at the time and so when you're presented with new stuff like we are now All right you, you should believe science you are discrediting past theories with either a new theories that are more scientifically backed or just straight up fact and you are dissolving old theories to the point where we shouldn't be believing that we live inside of a planetoid. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the most part, we don't believe that. So no, I don't think there's really any cults left. I think the best thing you have is that it's in literature. And sure. that's about it. Right. So obviously, this is definitely a, I would say, put to bed conspiracy theory. A historical conspiracy theory. Yes. It's still yeah. crazy. It is crazy. And but I don't know if, uh, you know, 1600 Matt would be like, you guys are crazy. I'd probably be like, oh, yeah. You would probably just be like, oh, it. shit, I want some bread. I need I, to live. Yeah, I'd go along with it. Sure. If they sure. promise to give you food and shelter I'll in the 1600s. Listen to whatever you have to say. Yeah, 1600s were wild. Anything, especially in the medieval period, like 1500s, 1400s, that was some wild stuff. But that's that's for our Thursday podcast, not our Monday ones. <laughs> Anyways, I think you said your final thoughts. My final thoughts are hollow earth sounds way more exciting to theorize than flat earthers. Yeah. I'll agree with that too. Because it's more fun to think about the fact that there's we're either inside another planet or we have we have another planet inside of us, like inside of Earth. The one being inside another planet is dumb as hell to me. The one that we're we have planetoids inside of Earth is the only one that could possibly be plausible because there's no way to prove that we can, we can't get inside of there. Yep. And any normal person would be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And this or is how theory, that, so. and like, that's how conspiracy theories go is that if you, you can't disprove it, you can't disprove things. Right. So, I mean, like the whole thing with, well, I mean, now you could totally disprove that there's no planetoids inside the earth, but like through visiting it, like if that, if you needed concrete evidence, like yeah. a fucking picture that of the inside of the earth, you weren't going to get it. You're not going to get it. So you'll never be satisfied. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. Well, with that, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And in, I hope you learned some weird science stuff about hollow earth and concave and convexing earth. And with that, have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye. Bye.